click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous lecture we have understood that is what is carboxylic acid, we have taken the definition of it as well as we have also got to know about the classification of carboxylic acid that is aliphatic and aromatic carboxylic acid. So depending on that we are going to talk about the nomenclature of carboxylic acid and let us understand that how can we give the nomenclature to the carboxylic acid. So friends, now we are going to talk about the nomenclature of carboxylic acid. So we understand that is there are two systems to give the name to the particular organic compound. That is a common name and that is an IUPAC nomenclature. So now we are going to discuss about the common name also as well as let us understand that is how we can give the IUPAC nomenclature to the certain carboxylic acid. So let us talk about the first one that is the common name. The common name given to the carboxylic acid, it depends upon the source from where the carboxylic acid has been obtained and that is how basically the common name is given. For example, if you talk about that is formic acid, the name formic acid is being derived from the compound that is known as formica that has been obtained from ants. So talking about the other one, suppose if I talk about that is acetic acid that is CH3COOH, the name acetic acid is basically derived from the word acetum which is present in vinegar. So talking about the another one, suppose if I talk about that is butyric acid and butyric acid has a structure that is CH3, CH2, CH2, COOH. So the name butyric acid is basically derived from the word butyrum. So this is how I have explained about the common name that has been given to the carboxylic acid. So let me give more information related to this one. So as we can see over here that is a carboxylic group that has been present over here and the carbon that has been attached to this carboxylic group is basically known as alpha carbon. So here also we could indicate that this is the carboxylic acid group or this is the carboxyl group and this is the carbon that has been attached to the carboxyl group that is nothing but COOH. So therefore this one could be named as alpha carbon. Similarly this could be given as beta carbon, gamma and so on. So this are indicating because in common name we usually indicate with the help of alpha we indicate with the help of beta gamma or this kind of alpha greek alphabets so as to indicate the presence of the other groups which are attached to alpha beta or gamma and so on so that is related to the common name so this was related to the common name and that is what i have expressed here so now let us come back to the main content and the main content is basically IUPC nomenclature. So this is the main thing that we are going to talk about and we are going to also talk about the certain examples for which we can give the IUPC nomenclature. So let us talk about the first thing that is IUPC nomenclature. So talking about the IUPC nomenclature over here that is for carboxylic acid as we understand that is the carboxylic acid are classified into two categories and those are nothing but the aliphatic carboxylic acid as well as the aromatic carboxylic acid. So we have differentiated here and let us understand that how we can give the IUPC nomenclature to the carboxylic acid. So talking about the aliphatic compounds that is the carboxylic acids are named by changing the suffix E of the corresponding alkane by oic acid. So talking about the example suppose if we have ethane and suppose if we have replaced one of the hydrogen of an ethane with a carboxyl group that is COOH. So in this case the total number of carbon in that molecule will be nothing but 3. So if it is 3 so therefore we could say that is it is corresponding to that of an propane but it also consists of a carboxyl group so that's the reason the name of that would be propanoic acid. So this is how we can give the name but let us understand the rules behind that also. So talking about the second one that is if more than one COOH group or if more than one carboxyl group are being present in the compound then the E of the suffix that is hydrocarbon especially about the alkane it would be retained back. So related to that we have certain examples also that is what we are going to look out. So let us understand the third rule. So talking about the next point that is the carbon of the carboxylic group is always assigned as locate number one. So this is all we are going to make a concern while giving a nomenclature to a particular structure of a carboxylic acid. So let us understand the next one that is aromatic compounds. So talking about the few important points and those are that is the name of the aromatic carboxylic acid are derived from the name of the parent benzoic acid. 
we consider benzene as an aromatic compound and suppose in the benzene ring suppose if carboxylic group that is COOH group is basically attached to it so therefore the benzene along with the COOH group will be called as benzoic acid and that is what the parent name is nothing but benzoic acid if it consists of a benzene in it so talking about the next point the next point is the IPC names ends with suffix carboxylic acid. Suppose if we have an aromatic compound or suppose if we have an aromatic carboxylic acid. So the word it will end with carboxylic acid. So we have certain examples that is what we are going to look out. So let us understand those examples. So let us try that. So friends, these are certain structure that I am going to give the IUPAC nomenclature. So let us understand the IUPAC nomenclature rules and so that we could give the name of this carboxylic acid very easily. So the first rule was we have to give or we have to assign the carbons number. So we understand that this is nothing but the carboxylic group that is COOH. So obviously this one would be nothing but the carbon number one. So this one would be carbon number two. This one would be carbon number three. This would be carbon number four and this would be carbon number five. And here basically we can see a methyl group that has been attached to the third carbon atom that are represented in straight chain as you could see over here. So therefore the name of this one would be 3-methyl. So that is the position of uh, the substituent group that has been attached to the straight chain of the carboxylic acid. And uh, talking about the next other functional group. As we can see over here that is there is a presence of double bond between carbon number 3 and carbon number 4. But in a straight chain we can find that this carboxylic acid consists of 5 carbon in it. So therefore in corresponding to an alkane or in corresponding to an hydrocarbon we could give the name as pentane. But obviously it is not a pentane, obviously it is a pentanoic acid. But we can also understand that is there is a presence of carbon-carbon double bond between carbon number 3 and carbon number 4. Therefore the name of this one could be given as pen 3 in and it is basically nothing but a carboxylic acid. So therefore the name of this one would be pent 3 in oic acid. So the name is 3-methyl pent 3 enoic acid. So that is the name of the first example that we have considered. So now let us move on to the next one. So this is the second structure and for which we have to give the IUPC nomenclature. So let us understand this one. So here we can find that is a carboxylic acid group or a carboxyl group that has been present in this chain. So this one could be given as SNS carbon number 1. This would be given as carbon number 2, 3, 4 and 5. Here basically we can see that is the substituents which are attached to carbon number 2 and carbon number 3 and those are nothing but methyl groups. So therefore we could give the name to this one as 2,3 dimethyl. Talk about the next one that is the total number of carbon present here is basically 5. So in corresponding to that of a hydrocarbon it would be called as a pentane but obviously it is not a pentane it is a carboxylic acid. So therefore the name would be nothing but pentanoic acid where the suffix E of pentane was been replaced by oic acid that is what we can observe here. So now let us move to the next one. So this is the another example so let us understand how can we give the IUPC nomenclature to this one. So here we have to find the carboxylic acid group or the carboxyl group and here is basically this is the carboxyl group that is what we have got over here. So this one would be given as carbon number one. This one is given as carbon number two, three, four and this one would be five. But we have found that there is another carboxyl group here. So either we could have started the numbering from here or either we could have started the numbering from here. Because as we can observe over here that is there is no other substitute that are been attached to the carbon atoms that are been present between the two carboxyl group. So it is easy to give the numbering either from this side or either from that side. So let us give the name for this one. So the total number of carbon present in this carboxylic acid is basically 5. So therefore it could be called as pentanoic acid. But we should also understand that is there is not only one carboxyl group, there is also another carboxyl group. So therefore the name of this one could be given as pentane. So here we can find that is there are two carboxylic group and those carboxylic group are at present at carbon number 1 and carbon number 5. So therefore the name of this one could be given as pentane 1,5 dioic acid. So here you can find that is since there is more than one carboxyl group in this structure or in this molecule. So therefore the suffix E of the pentane it has been retained 
and that is wow we have not eliminated this we have kept as it is and the name is pentane 1,5 dioic acid so this was related to the rule of IPC that we have did recently so now let's move to the next one so here's an, another one and for which we have to give the IPC nomenclature so here yeah, basically the carboxyl group is attached to a cyclohexene so therefore we have to give the number in such a way that the carboxyl group that is being attached to the carbon atom that should be given as carbon number one so therefore this is carbon number one so we have to move in that side that we can get the double bond in a lesser priority or we could say in a lesser number so now we have to move in such a way that this double bond should get the least number so therefore so we are not moving on this side we are moving on this side so therefore this is carbon number one this is carbon number two carbon number three four five and six it's but a wish to understand that is the carboxylic group is basically attached to a cyclohexene so therefore the name of this one could be given as cyclohex but the carbon carbon double bond it starts with carbon number three so therefore the name would be cyclohex three in but as you can understand that is this carboxylic group is attached to a cyclohexene so therefore the name will be given as cyclohex 3 in carboxylic acid because obviously the carboxylic acid or the carboxyl group will be attached to the carbon number one only so that's the reason no need to give the numbering to the carboxyl group so this is the name that is cyclohex 3 in carboxylic acid so let's now move to the next one so this is the another molecule for which we have to give the IPC nomenclature so let us understand that how we can give the IPC nomenclature to this one so starting with the first one that is we have to give the priority to the carboxyl group and the carboxyl group is here so therefore we'll give it number one this one would be given as number two this is nothing but number three four and five so here we can find that is there are substitutes that are being attached to a straight chain of the carboxylic acid and those are nothing but a bromine atom and a phenyl group so therefore we could give the IUPC nomenclature as 3 bromo and on the fourth position that is a phenyl group so therefore that is 3 bromo 4 phenyl and the total number of carbon that is present in a straight chain including the carboxyl group and that is how the name of this one could be given as pentanoic acid so therefore the name it will be ending with pentanoic acid so this is it so now let's talk about the next one so this is a molecule which is commonly known as phthalic acid so this is a common name so how we can give the IUPC nomenclature to this one so let us understand the rules so the rule says that we have to give the carbon as carbon number one where the carboxylic group is basically attached to the aromatic ring and that is here it is benzene so this is carbon number one while this is carbon number two so here we can find that is there is not only one carboxyl group but there are two carboxyl groups so therefore the name of this one could be given as benzene one comma two dicarboxylic acid so this is the IUPC nomenclature for thylic acid so now let us move on to the last one so this is the last example that I am going to talk about so let us understand that how we can give the IUPC nomenclature to this one so the carboxyl group that has been attached to the carbon atom that should be given as carbon number one while moving to the next one this will be carbon number two and three four five and this will go on so therefore we can find that is on carbon number two of the benzene basically methyl group is basically attached so therefore we could give the name as 2-methyl either this could be called as 2-methyl benzoic acid or either it could be called as 2-methyl benzene carboxylic acid so as we have discussed earlier also that is if it is an aromatic carboxylic acid obviously it will end with the suffix carboxylic acid so this is nothing but the IUPC nomenclature for this organic compound or this aromatic carboxylic acid so this is it thank you friends for watching this video I hope you have understood that how we can give the IUPC nomenclature to certain compounds which are nothing but carboxylic acid so I hope I will see you next time so till then don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you so much